Hello everyone. So today I am going to make a needle felted picture um, with a sunset, a little bit of a landscape, and a great big tree in the front. I sketched it out for you, but it was so light it was too hard to see on the screen. So I need a few felt colors. Just a few. You know, one or two. Or three or 12 or 20 or okay yeah I only need about six <laughs> but I have a few to choose from okay now that that's settled uh, let's move on <laughs> so I'm just starting off laying out a little bit of background um, covering things I put a towel down underneath this so that I could uh, not hit my desk and break all my needles. Uh, only problem is, is the towel's still a little bit too dense and my needles don't like to go through it. So, um, yeah. So we're just getting a little background going, blending it a little bit and deciding how I'm wanting colors to lay out and then realizing that some of my colors needed to be flip-flopped so then I had more colors here and there and everywhere. <laughs> so I've got two different needles I'm using. One is a multi-needle, actually it's four and one and the other one is a single needle and this multi-needle is really nice when you're trying to get a whole bunch like this laid down quickly. <laughs> So I'm just trying to do a basic securing of it here. I have been needle felting for many years now on and off. I every now and then decide to pick it up and, and work on it a little bit. And I've been thinking about doing this project for a little while now and finally decided to do it. So I have to keep picking up the piece because uh, you're, when you're poking this, the, the needles have these little tiny barbs on them so that it pulls the wool in, but it, when it comes back out, it comes out smooth so it doesn't bring the wool back out. And every time you're pushing that through, you're going through to the, well, in this case, the towel underneath. and you have to periodically lift it so you don't completely attach this piece to the towel because we don't want it part of the towel because it's going to go into a frame when we're done. So every now and then I got to lift it just to make sure that it's not staying. But here, oh wait, ow, yeah, I stuck myself after I broke the needle. So now I've gotten a piece of foam and I've just covered it with a piece of fabric. And it is working so much better. It's nice and soft and the needles are going in so that I don't bend them and break them like I did before. <laughs> so now I'm just adding some more sky in, deciding how I'm wanting things to lay. And I know that I'm wanting to do a little bit of a uh, sunset. And I do have a piece that I am working off of that I'm looking at. So my horizon line is going to be um, a little bit lower. That's where I'm working now because I want it to obviously not be centered. I, I want it more pleasing to the eye, which means you off-center things. So I want things a little bit lighter in the areas of where the sun is because you're going to have this reflection, highlight, whatever from the sun um, working out to a darker space. But I also want a little bit of reflection on the water that's going to be at, below the horizon line. So I'm trying to somewhat duplicate or mimic the top and the bottom for the reflection and the sunset itself. So I've got these fun little um, wool locks 
and they're really nice and shimmery. So I thought it would be kind of fun to use some of them in that sunset and just give that little bit of shine in the sunset. I did use a little tiny bit of the white in this one because I wasn't real happy with that cloud. So I added a little bit more into it of the shiny lock. But otherwise, the only place I used it really was in the yellow in the sunset. I'm working on the moon now. On the moon. Oh, wow. Mm, yeah, no. I'm working on the sun. The setting sun. <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess it's been a long day. Mm. No, not a moon. This is the sun. And it is setting. Even though it looks like a big round circle right now, it's going to get divided. Because part of it is going to be the setting sun, and part of it is going to be the reflection of the setting sun. So I've got a little bit of a, a mountain or a hill here in the front that I'm adding in. Just a silhouette of it, because it's being backlit by the sunset. And then there's the horizon line with a little tiny mountain scape and some poofy backlit clouds that are creating that division now for where the sky meets the water. But I'm a couple times I wanted a just a slightly different color here. I was wanting a little bit of the the kind of pinkish color, but I, I needed a hint of something more, so I'd added some dark in and blended it with a little Carter, or in my case, um, it's a dog brush. A lot of us use dog brushes. They work very well, and they're much cheaper when you're just doing something small like this. So I'm just creating that little bit of backlight behind the clouds that I was wanting, where the sun is glowing behind it. Well, we've got um, our cloud kind of comes out into a little peak here and reflects down there in the water. So now I'm adding in my big tree and just doing the big long branches before I start adding some of the smaller branches into it. Get the basic shape. I always have trouble when I'm doing trees, whether I'm drawing them or whatever. I don't know. I I love the trees. I love the way they look. And I always think, oh, I want to draw this tree or something. And I I don't know. I have issues getting the trees to look right. It, they just don't always, they don't turn out the way I want them to. I'll just say that. So this, this one didn't come out too bad when I'm done. But still not exactly, you know, what I was wanting. But. I, I do end up pretty happy with how this comes out in the end. So this takes a little bit of time. It's kind of time consuming doing these little fine lines and trying to, you know, get them needled exactly where I want them because I don't want to have any um, thick, you know, so I, I'm really paying attention to where these this needle is going right now that I'm only doing specifically this line where I want it. So it takes a little bit of time. And this one kind of meets up with the horizon line. And I try to have a little bit of a difference, differ, differentiation with it. Um, so I do end up a little bit later on adding a little tiny, tiny thin sliver of yellow to the top of the branch to create um, a highlight as it's glowing through so that you can see where the branch meets the horizon line. It ends up working out. So here I'm starting to put in the little tiny branches. And it, it, it takes a little bit of time to do this. <laughs> 
And especially when you got to keep lifting it to keep it from sticking in. Because let me tell you, it was really sticking into the backing. And I was having to do a lot of yanking to keep it from sticking back there. I think because of where these lines are so small, I'm so I'm poking in a lot in one very small area. So it tends to interlock a lot. So if you've noticed, I um, have done, sped up the video um, pretty much through this whole thing. I don't think I left a spot that wasn't sped up because it does take a lot of time to all, do all this uh, poking <laughs> of the, the wool. Well, I didn't want to bore you all with um, slow video. <laughs> So if you're liking this video, then click like, and if you'd like to see more, click subscribe. So if this is your first time joining me, I tend to do something different every week, and I hope you will join us again. And I hope that you have enjoyed this video and like how this came out. Um, I really, I really like how this turned out. So. I had a little frame I was working with specifically for this to fit into. So there's the back where all that wool was poking through. I actually think the back looks kind of cool. And here's my little frame. So I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope you like how it turned out. And we'll see you again soon.